Hello and welcome. I hope that you are having a fantastic day. We're going to talk about Bitcoin news today. Will Bitcoin explode and hit new all-time highs? We're going to take a look at four reasons for a price explosion and three reasons against a price explosion. So we got some great information for you today. Uh, stick to the end. Watch the entire video all the way through to the end. You're going to learn some great things that are going to help you take profits and avoid losses. So in today's video, we're going to look at three different articles. We're going to take a look at Grayscale is now buying one and a half times the amount of Bitcoin being mined. Wow. Every day, miners mine a certain amount of Bitcoin, but Grayscale, the BTC fund, is buying one and a half times the amount that the miners are creating on a daily basis. That is huge. Then we're going to take a look at three crucial reasons why Bitcoin risks crashing to sub $6,000 price levels and four fundamental reasons why Bitcoin demand is poised to explode to new highs. <clears throat> so, should I buy Bitcoin now or should I wait? We're going to give you ideas to help you take profits and avoid losses. Can we get this video to 99 likes? Smash the like button. It helps us a lot with the YouTube algorithms. When they see that you like a video, they really take advantage of that and promote that video. So I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. This is my opinion. Cryptocurrency involves a lot of risks. So before you do any trading in cryptocurrency, be sure you understand the risks involved. Take a look at the rest of this disclaimer. It'll give you some vital information that you'll find very useful. Now, if you decide to invest in Bitcoin and you buy $1,000 worth of Bitcoin and you hold it for three years, let's take a look at historically what would have happened. So if you bought $1,000 worth of Bitcoin on January 1, 2017 and on December 31st, 2019 you sold it, you would have made or received $7,206 on that initial $1,000 investment. And so take a look at this chart, but the most important thing to learn from it is that in the history of Bitcoin, there's there has yet to be a time. And if you bought Bitcoin and held it for three years, at this point, 100% of the time you would have made money. So uh, obviously, in my opinion, this is not financial advice, but in my opinion, it is a good thing to buy and hold Bitcoin for at least three years. Now, let's take a look at today's cryptocurrency market. Right now, is it's 6.44 a.m. Central Standard Time on May 28th, 2020, and Bitcoin is right at $9,233. And so it's gone up. It was, it was hovering in the mid $9,100, and so it's gone up by about $100, $150 bucks in the last hour or so. And the Bitcoin dominance is at 66.62%, so it's still right around the same ballpark. As you can see, we're looking at a mix of reds and greens throughout the rest of the cryptocurrency industry. Now, Grayscale, um, if you're not familiar with Grayscale, if you have a TD Ameritrade or any other regular stock exchange uh, account where you can go and buy and sell stocks, um, you can buy something called a GBTC. So just like you could go and buy stock in IBM, you can buy stock in one of Grayscale's many different funds. One of their funds is called GBTC, and that's the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust or Bitcoin Fund. And right now, Grayscale is buying one and a half times the amount of Bitcoin being mined and putting it in to that fund. And so cryptocurrency, crypto fund manager, Grayscale Investments is accumulating Bitcoin at a rate equivalent to 150% of the new coins created by miners since May 11th. Block reward halving. 
Now, according to the data published by independent crypto researchers, Kevin Rook, Grayscale has added 18,910 Bitcoins to the Bitcoin Investment Trust since the halvening, while only 12,337 Bitcoins have been mined since May 11th. Binance CEO uh, reposted the chart commenting, there isn't enough new supply to go around even for just one guy. And so recently, and this is a chart of the difference between those two amounts with Grayscale obviously uh, much higher than the amount of Bitcoin that's been mined since May 11th. We, we, it was about three weeks ago or four weeks ago, I'm not sure how long ago, but I did a, a video about Grayscale specifically and how they currently own somewhere around 1.8% of all Bitcoin in existence. And so it's obvious that they're continuing to accumulate more and more. And over time, they're going to push that number higher and higher. Who knows? Maybe they'll end up owning 5% of all Bitcoin in the near future. Um, but the bottom line is their fund is definitely growing. And one of the things that you want to know about the Grayscale Fund in particular is that according to Grayscale's quarterly documents, somewhere around 80-85% of all of the people purchasing their, um, uh, their fund through the, you know, through the stock exchanges, uh, 80% or better are institutions. It's not, it's not retail investors that are getting into or purchasing the Grayscale Bitcoin fund. It's institutions. It's, it's family offices. It's large corporations. It's different businesses. They're looking to get exposure to Bitcoin. And when institutions start buying in large volumes like they've been doing with Grayscale, they have done a lot of research um, before they make multi-million dollar investments. And when you look at what their fund is doing on a quarterly basis, you can definitely see that there are multi-million dollar investments where people are purchasing the grayscale GBTC uh, ticker symbol. So let's take a look at our next article. There's and and I, let me step back just for a second. The reason why it's important to understand that institutional money is investing in grayscale, uh, and this is my opinion. This is not financial advice, but in my opinion, if you can understand the the research and the time and the discussions that go into making those decisions, um, you can understand that maybe the most important thing isn't understanding what they know, but watching what they do. Because you can see the results or the conclusions they came to from all of the discussions, research, and involvement. You can see the, the conclusion that they drew by what they do. And if you follow what they do, you'll be acting based on the same information that they use to come to those conclusions. And so sometimes it's a good idea to follow the institutional money. So three reasons, three crucial reasons why Bitcoin risks crashing to sub $6,000 levels. Let's take a look. Bitcoin price plunged nearly 10% after failing to sustain above $10,000. The cryptocurrency has covered part of its recent losses, now trading over 9,100, but a confluence of technical and fundamental catalysts are pointing to a deeper downside correction towards sub $6,000 levels. Bitcoin trading is above $9,100, up almost 3.5% on a 24 hour adjusted time frame as it attempts to erase its recent losses. Now this leads, that leads analysts to look for hints in the old fractals, a combination of at least three crucial technical and fundamental factors predicts that the next move is extremely bearish with downside targets lurking in the sub $6,000 levels. Now the first reason why Bitcoin risks falling below $7,000 is its historical response to parabolic bull cycles. Prominent analyst Josh Rager um, when the cryptocurrency was on its way to top $14,000 in a wild upside rally, he noted that Bitcoin typically logs a 30 to 40% pullback on average 
after its price explosions, mentioning eight such moves in cryptocurrencies 11 year time frame. And so he gives a chart here. Um, this is the chart that I was thinking of. And he's, in this chart, he's showing eight different times where uh, Bitcoin had a parabolic rise and a 40% correction not long after that. So the second reason is the S&P 500 sentiment. Bitcoin's bearish technicals have, been, have the backing of a macroeconomic sentiment. The cryptocurrency risks correcting lower as its correlation with the S&P 500 index remains positive since March 2020. Catalysts that have driven both Bitcoin and the U.S. benchmark include the Federal Reserve's open-end stimulus program. And so the S&P 500 has taken a drop, it's gone up, and it, they're expecting it to take another fall. A fall in the stock market in February through March prompted a similar crash in the Bitcoin market. Observers noted that investors dumped their non-profitable Bitcoin positions to either cover their margin calls, seek, a safe seek cash as a safe haven, or to offset their losses in a global market route. Gold fell as well. With the potential of another S&P 500 brewing, Bitcoin risks extending its mid $10,000 corrections to new lower local lows. The long-term Bitcoin descending trend line. So their reason number three is because there's been a long-term descending trend line. And what they're doing is they're going all the way back to the Bitcoin high of 2017 and drawing lines from there. So another fractal that is stopping Bitcoin from making an extended bull rally is the long-term descending trend line. The cryptocurrency has failed to maintain a bullish bias near the falling red line as shown in the chart above. Each of the previous parabolic cycles exhausted near that level. Bitcoin's recent price correction from 10,000 also started from that tread line. That has increased the probability of a deeper pullback. Meanwhile, a 200-day moving average orange has traditionally served as an accumulation area for traders. The wave is now dipping into the sub $6,000 regions as shown via the red bar. It further indicates that Bitcoin could test the 5,900 to 6,800 area in the coming financial quarters. So, and then here's the chart that he was just referring to. Now let's take a look at four fundamental reasons why Bitcoin demand is posed to explode the price to new highs. Let's jump through that. This is bullish for Bitcoin because assuming consistent supply and growth and demand should result in an increase in the value of cryptocurrencies. And considering that there are multiple macro factors, according to D'Souza, prices could appreciate rapidly. So the number one reason is growing geopolitical unrest could drive the price of Bitcoin. The past few months and years have seen the geopolitical stage grow even more tumultuous. Most recently, this has accumulated this has culminated, excuse me, in a potential trade cold war between the U.S. and China. This war of sorts may start with sanctions on Chinese companies and officials by the U.S. over Hong Kong democracy. In Europe, there is also purportedly a chance for the European Union to fail if the recession drags longer. This has widely been speculated by some fringe analyst economists, but they say the potential is growing due to monetary and fiscal policies. And so essentially they're talking about how the greater the geopolitical unrest, the greater the demand for Bitcoin. And in many ways, that's very true. If you look at the markets or the countries where the Bitcoin uh, price and demand and usage is growing the fastest, it's often the countries that have the greatest um, monetary unrest, have the greatest inflation rate, have uh, the greatest monetary issues, are the countries where Bitcoin seems to have the greatest growth. 
So Bitcoin as a hedge against negative interest rates. To respond to slowing economies, global central banks have, been impl- have begun to implement increasing irrational and monetary policy. This has ultimately culminated in negative interest rates in notable economies like that of Japan and the EU. While many of the negative rate policies have been reflected in commercial banking, some say it's only a matter of time. Bitcoin stands to benefit from it because it offers no yield over negative rates, potentially making it a hedge against this central bank policy. Number three, central bank money printing. Over the past few months, there's been a strong influx in central bank and government money printing due to the recession. It's a trend that investors and analysts have seen as a bullish for scarce assets like Bitcoin and gold. In fact, Elon Musk commented, although massive currency issuance by government central banks is making Bitcoin internet money look solid by comparison. Number four, and the final reason is Bitcoin is becoming a payment system. According to D'Souza, Bitcoin is becoming a payment system adding to the bull case. This is shown by the development of the Lightning Network and other projects looking to boost Bitcoin's usability in the real world. You know, one of the biggest areas that I've been watching is um, the backed exchange, B-A-K-K-T, the backed exchange, it has announced that they're coming out with a new app for your phone and they purchased a rewards-based company that they're merging into that app. And the app is going to give you the ability to deposit cash. You'll be able to deposit your airline miles. You'll be able to deposit Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies. If you're uh, involved in any kind of online video game that gives you certain reward points, some of those will allow you to deposit your reward points into this app. And once a, a, uh, a points or cash or uh, rewards of some sort or even Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies are deposited into this app, you can then use that app to go and buy stuff. You could go to Starbucks and buy coffee or you could go to the grocery store and use any of those points, whether it was your airline miles or your video game rewards or other kinds of rewards points or cryptocurrency and at the grocery store you'll be able to purchase uh, you know whatever items that you put into your cart uh, as you're checking out you'll be able to use that app as your payment vehicle and so there's some really interesting things that are happening in the near future uh, that really does make this statement about Bitcoin becoming a payment system a greater and greater reality. Um, there's an exchange that is out of, um, I think it's Montana, if I remember correctly. Um, and when you deposit money into that exchange, they send you a Visa debit card, and then you can use your Visa debit card to spend any of the cryptocurrencies that you have on that exchange. So there's a lot of things happening that's making it easier to use cryptocurrency as a payment system. Now, do I think that, will I personally use uh, cryptocurrency for payments? I don't plan on it. I don't expect to do it anytime in the near future. Um, But hey, five years, 10 years down the road, that could be completely different. But in the short term, in the right here and now today, That's not on my radar at all. I intend to use uh, cryptocurrency as an investment vehicle to take an investment and and work on causing it to increase in value. So that is my video for today. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you got a lot out of it. We're hoping our intent is to help you take profits and avoid losses. In the meantime, how can I be of service to you? Do you have any questions, thoughts, Is there anything that you want to discuss? Put it in the YouTube comments below. In the meantime, I hope that you'll like, subscribe, and hodl. And hey, do me a favor. Have a fantastic day.